Welcome to the road to 1 million US dollars. Let's get right into the Bitcoin chart for today because over the last couple of weeks, Bitcoin has been consolidating. However, right now in the short term, we actually have some very important price action that we need to take a look at because a couple of days ago, Bitcoin broke this descending line of resistance, which had then been flipped into support for just a little bit. However, right now in the short term, Bitcoin is actually trading back below that trend line, flipping it again from a level of support back into resistance. Though before we go to the short term, if we just take a look at this daily time frame for a little bit, you can see that Bitcoin is just in this descending channel for now, where we actually had this wick to the downside all the way to the bull market support band right here, which is a critical indicator. So in my opinion, as long as we hold above this level, above this bull market support band, everything should be okay and we should eventually just start trending up again. However, in the case that we don't hold that bull market support band in this level right here, well, in that case, we can definitely expect more downside. And in fact, I'll show you what happened in the last bull run when we got below the bull market support band. First of all, we got this massive move to the downside for Bitcoin of 53%. And then after recovering for a bit, we actually saw another massive dump to the downside. However, this was caused by the COVID crash. So that's why personally, I'm only looking at this 53 move to the downside right here, which would still be very significant. So the bull market support band is actually a critical indicator that I will continue to track over the next couple of days and weeks as we are potentially going for another retest of that indicator. So going back to Bitcoin in the present day, we also need to take a look at the RSI momentum indicator on the daily time frame because over the last month or so we saw a lot of resistance from that descending line of resistance where recently the RSI broke above that descending line of resistance so right now it is critical to see how the RSI responds to this level of resistance which has now been flipped into support though if we do see the RSI break back below that trend line then likely we will see more bearish momentum in the short term. Two hours ago, I actually held a poll on the community tab of my YouTube channel, and I can see that most of you guys think we are going much lower than the current price. So taking a look at that for a little bit, especially for the majority that is saying we will go to 52K, so long as we hold above that 57.4K level, which is the 0.786 Fibonacci level for Bitcoin, everything should just be fine. However, if we do actually break below that level, potentially we could be looking at this 48.6K level. But in my opinion, this is very far-fetched as of right now, because we haven't even broken below this. What you must keep in mind is that there are a lot of support levels in between the current price and actually that 52K level. And even if in the end it does go to 52K, personally, this is not a move that I'm looking to short all the way to the downside here. I will likely just be taking short-term trades in between support and resistance levels because I think those are much more predictable than saying that it must reach a certain level that is much lower than the current price. This actually leads me to the next point, which is a comment that I saw on yesterday's video from Knowledge is Gold, who has been watching my videos for about a month so far. So thank you for watching. However, he is saying that I am saying that the price is going to the upside based on the heat map. So because I think it will help everyone who's watching here, especially the newer viewers as well, let me just explain how the Bitcoin liquidation heat maps work so you can understand what I'm actually saying in my videos. What I said in the video and is the same for today is actually that most of the liquidity on the one month time frame is to the upside at 67.4K and there's more liquidity at 71.8K. Like I have been saying over the last couple of weeks, I do think that at some point we will take out these levels of liquidity to the upside because simply we are in a bull run. And in my opinion, 73K was not the top of the bull run. So since I do think that we will go higher at some point, that's why I'm saying I think it is likely that we will take out those levels of liquidity. However, we must understand the difference between the different time frames because here you see the one month time frame for the Bitcoin liquidation heat map. However, in the short term, for example, the 24 hour time frame, there's actually most of the liquidity to the downside. So first of all, you can see it right here at 60.5K, most of the liquidity is right here. So likely the Bitcoin price could get attracted to that level. And zooming out on the one week time frame, exactly like I have been saying since we were all the way up here, most of the liquidity in the short term is to the downside and not to the upside. 
Though if you zoom out far enough, eventually you will see that most of the liquidity is to the upside. And I still have the opinion that at some point we are going to take out those levels, but potentially there's just first more downside to see in the short term. So now taking a look at the short term support and resistance levels for Bitcoin on the four hour time frame. First of all, you can see that recently Bitcoin got rejected from this big level of resistance, which is sitting from about 65K all the way up to 66,000 US dollars. And in the process of getting rejected, Bitcoin actually formed this head and shoulders pattern, which is a bearish pattern with a current active price target of about 59.9K. Though one thing you must keep in mind is that currently Bitcoin is in a massive level of support from about 64.4K all the way down to 60,000 US dollars. So potentially you could see a bounce from here. Though in the case that we do trade below that 60K level with confirmed candle closes, for example, you see the price trade below, bounce to the upside and get rejected from this level. Well, in that case, the next big level of support is actually right here from 58,000 all the way down to 56.5K. And for this head and shoulders pattern, the point of invalidation, so the point where you can cross off this price target, meaning that the pattern is no longer active, is actually if you do see the price trade above the point of the breakout, which is roughly at 62.7K. And personally, I am not shorting this move to the downside because I'm not shorting Bitcoin when it is in a massive level of support. Though on the topic of this head and shoulders pattern, you can see that on the four hour time frame, we now have a bullish divergence, which is whenever you have lower lows in the Bitcoin price and higher lows in the RSI momentum indicator. And usually when you see a bullish divergence, what happens is you either get some choppy sideways price action, so a break from the bearish momentum, or you even get a bit of bullish momentum in the short term. But so long as the price doesn't go above the point of the breakout at 62.7K, it means that this price target right here, all the way down to 59.9K is still active. So the price can still go to that level. Now taking a look at the Bitcoin ETF flow tables for today, you can see that yesterday we actually had a net inflow of $11.5 million on Wednesday. And there isn't really much to say about these inflows because yeah, most of the Bitcoin ETFs didn't buy anything. However, one thing that is noteworthy is that Grayscale didn't sell anything. And this is actually kind of a good thing for Grayscale because usually they get tens or even hundreds of millions of dollars worth of outflows from their investors every single weekday. So potentially, as we have been seeing over these last couple of days, the selling pressure from Grayscale is actually starting to whittle down a little bit. Now, taking a look at Ethereum on the weekly time frame. First of all, you can see that we got rejected from the 0.786 Fibonacci level at $4,000 and then traded all the way to the 0.5 Fibonacci level at about $2,850, where in the short term, the price found some support. However, a couple of weeks ago, we got another rejection from the 0.618 Fibonacci level and are therefore now targeting this 0.5 Fib level. So let's take a look at the short term support and resistance levels for Ethereum. And one quick note before I go to the short term levels on the daily time frame for ETH, you can actually see that we are still clearly in a big downtrend. So what you want to look for in the case that you're looking for a reversal in the Ethereum price is actually for the price to break above that descending line of resistance. And when it does break that trend line, potentially that could be the signal for you that the price is ready to reverse to the upside. Now, taking a look at the short term support and resistance levels for ETH. Recently, Ethereum got rejected from this big level of resistance, which is sitting from about 3150 all the way up to 3250. And in the case that we get a bounce from here and break through that level, the next level of resistance above that is actually the 0.618 Fibonacci level, which is sitting at 3330. However, after facing that rejection, Ethereum traded all the way to the downside into this next level of support, which is sitting from $3,000 all the way down to 2850. And another key level to note is this 0.5 Fibonacci level at 2864. Because in the case that you do see Ethereum lose that level of support, so trade below 2850 and potentially get a retest and a rejection from there, well, the next level of support below that price is actually from 2820 all the way down to 2,600 for the price of Ethereum. And I know that this video has been pretty bearish so far, but of course, at any point, especially in these support levels, you can expect to see a bounce in the short term because that's what we have been seeing. And that's actually what makes it a big level of support. 
Now moving on to Solana on the weekly time frame, where we got rejected from the 0.786 Fibonacci level at about $200, roughly speaking, where we traded all the way to the downside to the 0.5 Fibonacci level. In fact, we even went pretty deep below that. So right now, let's take a look at the short-term support and resistance levels. First of all, looking at the recent price action for Solana, you can see that we got a perfect rejection from this level of resistance that I have mentioned over many videos, actually, I think the last two weeks or so. So it's good to see that that level has been very accurate. And we fell exactly into this big level of support where we are now finding some support in the short term. And this level is sitting from $150 all the way down to $140 for the price of Solana. Though in the case that we don't hold that level and actually break to the downside, well, the next big level of support below that level is from about 133 all the way down to $125 for the price of Solana. And as with all of these levels of support, if the price trades below that level of support, then it actually flips it into resistance. So you can see a possible rejection from that level again. But of course, before you can say that it has been flipped into resistance, at the very least, you want to see some confirmed candle closes, at least on the four hour time frame. But ideally, you actually get a retest of that level and then it gets rejected from there, really confirming that it is now a level of resistance. Now, if you are a beginner in crypto and want to understand more about how to trade and also how to do your own technical analysis, I recommend you join my free trading course, which you can do on Patreon, simply by clicking on this join for free button right here. It is 100% free and you can watch all of the videos that I have in there. Currently there's four videos, but as soon as I add more videos, you will get notified. So I highly recommend you go check that out. This has been today's market update. Thank you very much for watching once again, and I will see you tomorrow in the next one.